What's up, guys? I want to welcome you today to Storytelling 101. This is probably my favorite thing, and it is probably one of the most important things um, when it comes to concept art, because I think uh, a lot of people get confused with what concept art is and what illustration is. And I think a lot of people love the glamorous, um, illustrative, fancy paintings, but no one really wants to do the hardcore grant work and they don't really want to uh, it's not work if you love it but they don't really want to think about how things work uh, what the story is behind everything that's going on why is this there does the shape language make sense is the construction is the construction sound um, does it fit into the world so this one's going to be about storytelling and I think this is such a great one I love storytelling and I love storytelling through through art I love I love storytelling I love storytelling through drawing actually drawing is my favorite part of concept art and I think a great concept artist will be able to pretty much draw anything and everything to tell a story you want to they the concept the cool thing about concept art is that you're the first uh, you're the first visual cue when it comes to the story which is really cool you get to you get to be the first one to interpret the script into the story this is for animation this is for games as well so this is going to be about storytelling um obviously if because this is for beginners um i just want to cover the most important things in strictly concept art so the fundamentals of art are the most important things um understanding perspective is probably your your best one so being able to draw different spheres and cubes and in different facing different ways with different um, basic lighting uh, reflections and uh, projections that's probably your most important thing if you can draw anything in perspective you can tell a story uh, through an interesting world and obviously hardcore line art is really is really important to understand as well so I'm not going to go over the details on that but I just want to cover that just briefly um, so when you're telling a story, you kind of want to understand what universe you are actually designing for. And you want to ask yourself all the all the hard questions. I actually find that the best designers, the best concept artists that I know out there are the ones that are almost overly honest with themselves. Because in in hardcore concept art, you're going to end up iterating so much on one particular design that you you can't really get precious about it because you're probably going to change it anyway or you're going to add something more or you're going to give it to your art director and they're going to ask you to change this and that and if you get um, precious over the work it's going to be hard for you to iterate further on it because you're so attached to this one single thing and I know it's easier like everyone says don't get attached to your your art stuff in concept art but it's it's a lot easier said than done and um, the more you do it the more you the more you iterate on one thing, the more you actually start to find a lot of joy in iterating because it is a form of exploration, which is which is the coolest part. And the the honesty part is really, really important to be overly honest. Like, does this really look nice? Does it fit in the story? Does it make sense? Is the construction sound? Would a modeler be able to take this and build it in 3D? If not, then do I need to do a call out? So these are the kinds of questions that you need to be asking. And um, when you when you are designing, so say for example, you want to get a job at some studio, you want to work with some team, you kind of go and look at the the art that they are making already for the games that they are making already, and you kind of redesign the worlds in those games that that team is making art for already. So. Um, so you would do a whole bunch of research on that game or that film or whatever it is and you figure out the kind of shape language that they are doing. Um, I, I would imagine everyone listening to this would kind of understand the shape language. So say for example I'm designing a, um, a, a, a city or whatever for Overwatch. I would go in there and look at the kind of shapes that they are using, the kind of design mechanisms that they are using to build up these different parts because that's what actually makes that's what tells the story and that's what makes these different worlds very unique that's why these games and films do so really well um <laughs> do really well do so really well so so it's so it's important to understand 
what the other designers on the team are doing. So when you go in and you do get hired for this team, you'll be able to contribute to it, which is which is the most important part. So you can plug right in and really in, in, enjoy contributing to this. And uh, you're going to give it to you. So the, the important part is to actually tell the story. But at the same time, when you're creating artwork for an existing IP, you don't want to create what they have already too much because they're going to look, I mean, think about it. They get a whole bunch of portfolios and they're going to be like, okay, what is this? Is this person going to actually add to my, my, the game or the film? Are they going to add value to it? What are they bringing that's new to it? And that is, that is a fundamental question that I ask myself every single time I'm redesigning a building, a city, a character, a creature, like, how how am I contributing to this IP? Or how am I making this look a little bit like out there? How am I, what new ideas am I bringing? Because ideas are really easy to think about, but executing them is actually the hard part. Um, so so we, you want to think of what what is it that you are bringing that's new to this world? And if you can find new ways of creating stories or language in existing IPs you're pretty much golden and <laughs> you almost won't even need to go looking for work because there's it's so rare to find artists concept artists that actually do that out there um, so so it's important to think about what you can bring that's new to the table because they can see that you can add value to their team this is what it's all about it's all about adding value because if you can add value to to the IP and the story that you're telling within the existing law of that game, you you will have work forever. And um and how do you get there? Because that's the hardest part. So it's easier to say all this, but how do you get there? Well, you go and you do that's where the creative thinking part comes in. And once you understand the basics of the fundamentals of how to draw, where to put things, then you kind of free yourself up and you don't need to think too much. So if you're just starting out right now, probably the most important thing to do would be to nail down your fundamentals that you are able to tell a story because you can have all these cool ideas but if you can't articulate them well to a team or your producer or to your or on your portfolio then no one's no one's going to really buy your idea so the (laughs) the hardest bullet to bite is that no one really cares about you (laughs) until until they look at your art. I remember hearing that and I was so like shocked like a, a while ago. And I actually understand what, what they were saying now is they will only care about, this is the reality of it. When they look at your portfolio, then they will only start to take an interest in you. That's just how it works. So if you want a, a job in games uh, specifically or films, uh, your portfolio needs to be so tight. So... So yeah, it's it's so that's why the being overly honest is is so crucial and so important. And nailing down these fundamentals as I was saying now is is so important because it gives you the tools to be able to communicate to other people this like epic story, this new idea that you have. And um <clears throat> and if you like it, if you enjoy it, you will want to iterate on that story which is the coolest part because concept art requires so much iteration. It's going to be a lot of back and forth. And if you love the story, the storytelling side of it, you'll actually really enjoy the back and forth. So that's another question to think about is like, actually, do I really want to do concept art or do I want to do illustration and like really, really like, do I want to spend a week on a painting kind of thing? Um, And if you do, that's a different medium, but this is a concept art kind of, workshop type talk so that's what this is and um if you don't if you don't like the storytelling part or the iteration part or the back and forth and the construction thinking and how these things work then it's probably worth asking whether you actually want to do concept art or not so (laughs) i'm playing devil's advocate here because i i think people have so much yeah obviously i always say this people have so much greatness in them um, it's just worth asking yourselves and being overly honest with yourself about like what it is. So some people are amazing painters and I, I, maybe I could be an amazing painter. I think I'm, I'm pretty good, but I don't think, I think the storytelling 
part is my most favorite part that I love the most. So I put more energy into the the storytelling part where the where as an illustrator would put so much into just the the accuracy of their of their painting, whereas that's not really me. So yeah, it's worth asking yourself all these questions. But yeah, this was just a quick riff on storytelling for concept artists. And um, I think there's, I think there's a, I didn't go too in depth because I didn't want to, I didn't want it to get too technical, but I think there's some things to take away and some things to think about here. And um, I would love to hear what you guys liked about this. Uh, yeah, leave it in the comments. And if you like my videos and you want to see more, um, hit a sub and <laughs> yeah, let me know of the other types of videos that you would want me to make and uh, the things that would be helpful. Cool, guys. I'll check you in the next one. Cheers.